You know, I woke up this morning uh, thinking about my dad and um, wondering why um, when you're sick, people have a tendency to pull away from you. Not everybody. I mean, there's, you know, maybe the closest people in your life, if you're lucky, will, you know, stick by you and help you and care for you and hold you when you need to be held and, you know, but, um, I don't know, it just feels like, like people have a tendency to pull away when you're sick. Um, I don't know why, you know, maybe it's because, I don't know, there's like an underlying nature of not wanting to catch something, you know, regardless of whether you're contagious or not. Um, maybe it's because people have a tendency to see their own mortality in sick people. So, quick little story, um, and why I woke up thinking about my dad was um, several years ago, my dad was diagnosed with myelodysplastic syndrome, um, MDS. It's a blood disorder um, where your blood doesn't make enough cells. You know, I think red blood cells, I'm not sure. Um, regardless, it's a, you know, it's a bad, it's a bad disorder. It's a disorder that that can um, mutate to leukemia, um, which is a blood cancer. Um, in my dad's case, it unfortunately it did mutate to leukemia, um, and we lost him. But in the year, year and a half leading up to his death, he... Um, he had a real hard time dealing with his, you know, his illness and probably his mortality. I mean, I didn't understand it at the time. I really, really didn't because, you know, he became real difficult to deal with. He became, um, he became real depressed he became angry, he became bitter, you know, he started making poor decisions about finances, you know, he did a lot of things that was difficult to understand, but, you know, he did them, I think, because he's you know, he was scared. He was afraid of dying. You know, he didn't. He didn't want to leave. Um, I didn't understand that at the time. I really didn't. And like a lot of other people, you know, in my family and around, you know, we got a little tired of hearing the, you know, the "woe is me," you know, because at the time we thought there was hope. At the time we thought, you know, he was getting treatment. He was getting blood transfusions. He was, you know, he was. It was not leukemia, it was still MDS. You know, there was hope. Um, so, I mean, we, you know, we, we would get, keep saying to him, you know, you need to fight, you need to quit this, you know, this self-destruction, you need to snap out of it, <laughs> snap out of it. Um, you know, if I knew at the time how hurtful the words snap out of it were, um, Gosh, I would have never said them. And, you know, that's that's part of what I struggle with today because now I'm sick um, with what I don't know. I uh, still don't know. Um, but I found myself depressed, you know, dejected, angry, all the things that my father was doing, um all the things that I didn't understand at the time, but now I get it. I get it. And I regret the way I treated him. I seriously regret the way I treated him. Um, 
And I guess it's kind of one of those things you just don't get it until you go through it. It's like depression. Depression's not just about being down or being sad. You can't just snap out of it. Um, or anxiety. You know, your panic attacks. It's the, you know, panic attacks is not just feeling fearful. It's not just feeling a little on edge or tense. Um, and you can't just switch it off. You can't. And I guess that's part of what I never understood. But I get it now. I get it now. Um, and I'm truly sorry for the way I treated my dad. I wished I had that year over again. Um, but I don't. You know, if, if somebody close to you is sick and, you know, they're struggling and their personality is changing, um, you know, treat them with kid gloves. You know, try to be empathetic. You know, because I don't want people to sit back and have the same regret that I live with, with my father. So, I'll leave it at that. Peace out.